and the omnibus. So I was forced into the arches when I was a child. And look, it's come back to bite me later on. I'm awash with the stuff. The Archers is the world's longest running radio show, with more than 15,000 episodes broadcast. Despite being a rural flavour show, The Archers is recorded in the heart of the UK's second largest city, Birmingham. You're listening to Friday's episode of The Archers from BBC Radio 4. <laughs> That's very kind. The lane's too narrow for both of us at full speed. Can you get past? Uh, yes, yes, I can now. <laughs> what a handsome bicycle. Oh, well, I'm glad you like it. Would you know if Grange Farm is first right up to the church? I, I think I've forgotten the way. First right, yes, indeed. <laughs> um, Mrs. Meller, I presume? That's me. Linda Snell from Ambridge Hall. Um, I gather the Bartleby arrangement is back on track. <laughs> I'm so pleased. I've really fallen in love with the old pony. Ah. Well, I shall see you there. I'm popping over at one to say au revoir. <laughs> Lovely. See you later. You all set then, George? She'll be here any minute. I got his stuff ready. There's nothing else to do. Yeah, most folks said their goodbyes this morning. Poor Clary had to go inside, she was well enough. <laughs> uh, Meg was all right when you spoke to her yesterday. She said it ain't the first time. Well, it's a difficult thing to do, handing a favourite animal over to a virtual stranger. Uh, but she's a caring person, Neil, we all think that. Yeah, you'll be in good hands, don't you worry, George. I know that. Right, well, I'd better get some lunch down me before I head back to Barrow. <laughs> Ah, you've been a good, faithful friend over the years, Bartleby. It's time you had a lovely rest now. <laughs> Thanks for popping over. Oh, uh, <laughs> all best then. <laughs> Bye, Grandad. Oh, blimey. We're all going to blub before the day's out. Oh, I had another idea about how to spend the money. What now? Well, your great granddad loved his cider. So how about a new cider press? You always said that old one makes the best cider. Well, only because we can't afford a better one. Nah. But you're getting close to a good idea. Am I? <laughs> oh, I'll keep thinking then. Oh, here she is. Right on time. Oh, I was really proud of George this morning. He's growing up at last. Mm. Well, sit down, love. Right. I've done your ham and pickle, or there's uh, cheese if you prefer. It. Oh, uh, thanks, love. <clears throat> Christopher's taking Martha to the playground with Alice again after work. Well, that's nice. Is it? Oh, when they went on Sunday, he said it was like they were a little family again. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you can see him trying just to wish it all away. Yeah. You can't blame him for that. After all, we both know how he really feels about Alice, still, despite everything that's happened. Oh, no. Oh, I can't see that changing, can you? Maybe not. But you've said it yourself. Hmm? He's not seeing things clearly at the moment, is he? Mm, probably not. So maybe it's down to us to stand back and... Oh, I don't know, try and think how best to protect him and Martha. Well, I'm not sure what we can do, love. Well, no, no, may. Oh, I can't help thinking that things could have been so much better for Martha with all the privilege Alice was born into. Well, I needn't count for anything, love. Let's face it, life rarely turns out how you expect it. You just have to, well, get on with it. Oh. Except I'm really starting to wonder how getting on with it is helping anyone. I remember you liked this last time I saw you. He does like it. High fibre cubes, ain't it? Mixed with chaff, yes. Perfect for senior digestion. Oh, I might have to try it. <laughs> uh, have you been running your veterans home for long, Meg? Nearly 12 years. We were both from farming stock. My late husband and I, but 
he was lucky enough to become a trainer, so we worked with racehorses for many years. Oh, but that was exciting, eh, George? <laughs> racehorses? <laughs> Maybe. To be honest, I was always more interested in the horses than the racing. So when we packed up, we naturally took a couple of the retired ones with us. Oh, I see. I thought we'd all grow old together. But then, well, my, my husband died very suddenly. Oh, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I didn't want to do anything without him by my side. No. It was the horses that got me through. Is that why you started the home? Yes, it was. I, I used the money he left me to buy some more land, and it wasn't long before I acquired a cheeky Welsh pony, then a retired shire horse. So that was the beginning. And we are all growing old together. So I do hope you'll trust me with Bartleby, George. I truly believe you'll be happy in our strange but loving little family. I reckon he will. <laughs> oh, George, uh, Linda left this for Bartleby. Said she couldn't resist. <laughs> That's an impressive stable rug. <laughs> Emma and Edward gave her his height and weight, so it should be the right size. <laughs> It's a right jazzy pattern. <laughs> I wonder if that's what the cricket team's in for. Uh, Linda is proposing a dazzling new kit, Meg, literally. <laughs> I see. Uh, though I have warned her, William says he's not wearing anything too uh, wacky. Meg doesn't need to hear about our village cricket, Grandpa. No, I'm fascinated. And I'd love to come and watch your team one day. Oh, I'm sure you'd be most welcome. I kind of like this rug. It's actually not bad. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Now, George, I've got your notes in the car about what he likes and doesn't like. You'd better add hoofpick into the list. <laughs> Dislikes, I assume. Hates it. <laughs> As do many of our veterans, so he'll be in good company. See? He's going to settle in in no time. <laughs> Let me fetch my notebook in case there's anything else to be added. Yeah, sure. <laughs> See you in a sec. Hey, how about this then, George? What? For the money. We plant some apple trees for our cider. Huh. Yeah, I quite like that idea. <laughs> you do? <laughs> and how about... Yeah, how about we use the rest to get a nice bit of marble for Great Granddad Joe's grave? Marble, eh? Now then, Bert Fry ain't got no marble. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I can see Dad now, all peaceful and giving him a cheeky wink. As if to say, Oi, look who's got marble. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Neil. Can't get yesterday's conversation out of my mind. What about Alice? Brian taking food over, Adam checking her post, Lillian holding her job open. Well, she's got a lot of people who love her and they all want to support her, including us and Christopher. We're all doing what we can. Yeah, but is it what she needs? How do you mean? Well, if everyone's bending over backwards to support her, why would she do anything different? Ah. Oh. I mean, what's actually stopping her? Buying another bottle of vodka? What's stopping her pouring herself another glass? Oh, I don't know. No one's even questioning her behaviour, Neil. It's like we're treading on eggshells in case she gets worse, but, I mean, how can she get any worse? Well, I hate to say it, Susan, but she can get a lot worse. The fact that she's seen Martha pretty much every day, managed to be dressed and washed ready, that's not to be scoffed at. I'm not scoffing, Neil. Oh, sorry, wrong word, but, look, it's actually quite an achievement. Oh, rubbish! Hmm? This was a bright young mother, full of energy, raising her daughter, keeping her home nice, running a business, in charge of stuff, all that and more. But we're supposed to be grateful that she gets in the shower and manages not to slur her speech for half an hour. Look, I, I honestly don't think it's as simple as that. <laughs> and now that she's pleaded not guilty, there's a very real chance she will go to prison. Oh, she's bound to go to prison, Neil. And it's anyone's guess what happens then, it really is. It can completely finish people off, especially if they're vulnerable to start with. And then where are we? Hmm. Well, unless someone manages to persuade her to change her plea. Which won't happen, will it? Because that not guilty plea is yet more proof that she's in complete denial. Yeah. Well, of course, it's possible that Brian finds her a legal team that could get her off. <sighs> well, even if they did, what then? What 
what stops her having another drink? Absolutely nothing. Mm. Well, everyone's basically excusing her behaviour. What is it that makes Alice sit up and think? Mm. I mean, why should she bother taking responsibility? Look, Susan, we know nothing about alcoholism. I know uh, way more than I want to, and so do you. What they say is once someone hits rock bottom, that's when they grasp the nettle. But she'll never hit rock bottom, Neil. No one's letting her. Well, let, let's say she does. Hmm? What impact would that have on young Martha? And how in heaven's name would it make anything easier for our son? It'd be awful, I know. Yeah, he'd have to pick up the pieces and so would we. <sighs> Look, I get what you're saying, love, believe me, but... This is Christopher's life we're talking about here. I'm not convinced he knows any more than we do about the rights and wrongs of all this. He's too upset to see any of it clearly. Yeah, but I still think that we should be led by him, put his needs first. But that's what we're doing, isn't it? And all the time Alice self-medicates into a stupor not half a mile from where we're sitting. <sighs> oh. Oh. It's Chris. Mm? He's had some evening appointments come in. He wants us to supervise Martha's visits with Alice next week. Oh, oh dear. Martin's insisting on going through next year's projections, so I'll be working late all week. But if you're not comfortable doing it, we could try asking Kate. No, don't be silly. Of course I'll do it. Yeah? Yes. Whatever we think, Martha's relationship with her mum, that's still really important. I know, and that's why I'll do it. But you have to wonder, for all our noble intentions, if we're not just prolonging the inevitable. Mm. And if what we're doing is enabling her to carry on drinking, how is that helping Martha? OK, that's nice and secure. So you're good to go, boy. <laughs> It's going to be weird at first, mate, but you'll get used to it, yeah? Won't take long. What's that then, George? Oh, coming! Thanks for listening the past few weeks, right? And not, uh, not judging or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't have got through none of it without you here. George, come on! She's all right, is Meg. She'll look after you, OK? George! See you, Bartleby. You take it easy. Give us a hand here, George. Right you are. Now shoot the bolt that side. Yep, all secured, Meg. He's ready when you are. Thanks, both of you. Come and see us soon. Cheers now. Safe journey. Bye, Meg. Bye, mate. Be good. spot effects on the arches uh, just uh, any are you what we call foley then uh, kind of yep first. okay and and these are these are all part of the uh, paraphernalia of production uh, yep that's uh, the ball bar that's this one yep that's I mean Haley so wanted to be in their own place when their baby came it's uh, due in two months uh, not much chance of that now no I mean it would have been a stretch for them financially mine but Oh, I just wish there was something practical I could do to help them, Caroline. I, mean, I think the Archers has had this immense popularity over the years, um, basically because it has always very accurately reflected the reality of life and living in a rural community at whatever